Quest of Doom is finally here. Now before we begin, if you like this video, check out my channel. I have a ton of content on there that I'll think you'll enjoy. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be kept up to date with the latest and help this channel continue. The year is 1993. I'm around my grandparents' house. I reach the top of the stairs, look to my left, and see my uncle playing this. It makes such an impression on me that even though I was only eight years old, I still remember the exact scene he was playing at the time I first saw it. It looked something like what you're seeing on the screen now. The visuals, the sound, the goriness, as the caco demon just melted into a pile of blood and guts. I'd never seen anything quite like it, and since then, I've owned multiple copies of the game. I have owned Doom 64, the N64 version, I've owned the 32X version, 32X being a Sega Mega Drive add-on. I've also owned the PlayStation version of Doom, as well as the Game Boy Advance version, and of course the PC version too. So what were your first memories of Doom? How many versions of Doom have you owned? Let me know in the comment section below. So I'll be covering quite a few things in this video, but there are timestamps in the description below in case you want to skip to a certain section. First we'll go through what WAD files are and how they work. Then we'll talk about where to find these WAD files, not only for the main game, but additional WADs, say extra levels and total conversions. Then we'll look at installing Quest Z Doom, as well as all the different settings that you can adjust in the menu. Then we'll look at Quest Z Doom in action, so looking at some gameplay for some of the Doom mods, as well as Heretic, Hexen and Strife running on this port. And finally, we'll take a look at how to run additional mods that you can't download via the auto downloader. So let's start by talking about what a WAD is. WAD stands for Where's All The Data. Now there are various types of WAD, IWAD, PWAD and DICKWAD. Now I'll only be talking about the first two types of WAD in this video. WADs were developed by lead programmer of ID Software, John Carmack. And what they did, they stored the game data such as level graphics, sound effects and so on separately from the game engine. This made it easier for people to modify the data and create their own mods. By the way, if you want to know more about the history of Doom and how it all started, check out this great book, Masters of Doom. Anyway, let's get back to talking about WAD. So I'm going to open what's called the iWAD or internal WAD for Doom 2. So as you can see, this contains the game's data, maps, sounds, sprites, textures, and so on. Here I am showing you the contents of the Doom 2 iWAD using a program called Slade. Now let's look at a patch wad or p wad for short. Now the i wad or the internal wad is never edited directly. Instead, if you want to make a modification, say a new map, you'd create a p wad that only contain the data you wanted to replace in the i wad. So here I am selecting a map called 57 East, and when I use this wad, it replaces level one on Doom 2 with this custom map. You can see that here, if we look at the top of the window, it says this map is entryway, but we clearly know this is not the case. All that's happened is we've used this patch wad to replace map one. And what will happen once I've completed this level, it will go on to the next level in the Doom 2 iWAD. The other file types you might come across is the .pk3 and sometimes the .pk7 file types. Now these are pretty much like zip files that modern ports of Doom can run. They contain all the data for that particular modification in specified folders and act very much like a PWAD in that it overrides data contained in the IWAD. Now you might also hear terms such as MegaWAD or Total Conversion, with MegaWAD being defined as a WAD containing 15 or more levels and a Total Conversion being a PWAD that replaces all or almost all of the resources used within the IWAD, the original game. Examples of some good Total Conversions include Aliens TC, Batman Doom and Action Doom. A total conversion essentially creates an entirely new gameplay experience for you using the Doom engine. So where can you find these game wads? Well one place is through hard copies of the game. I have my collector's edition of Doom here. I go into the DVD and I can see the wad just in the folder. I just copy and paste that wad wherever I need it. At other times you might need to install the game to find the wads and this might require you to run the setup 
in a compatibility mode as if it's an older version it might not run with your current operating system now if that doesn't work there's always dosbox now a tutorial on dosbox is beyond the scope of this video but i'll leave a link in the description below which will show you how to use it to install old games now if you don't already own a copy of the game you can get the doom series heretic hexen and strife from steam you can also get the doom series and strife from gog and you can also get some of the doom games from green man gaming so shop around i also hear that doom 3 bfg edition and doom eternal both contain some original doom wad files so that means that if you own these games then you won't necessarily need to buy the original doom series and you really don't need to have an original doom wad to play quest z doom because you can download free doom from the quest z doom launcher which basically allows you to play doom for free i'll show you how a bit later now using the game Hexen, I'll demonstrate how you can access the Doom WAD files via Steam. You right click on the game, you select properties, then you select local files, browse local files, and they should be within that folder structure there. Now if you buy it from GOG, right click the game, manage installation and then show folder, and they should be knocking around there somewhere. The Quest Z Doom Launcher already contains a bunch of mods and WADs, but if you're after some more, you can go to the WAD archive, or you can check out the CACO Awards, which showcases some of the best wads for each year going way back to 2004. Doom World also has a top wads section for each year, and Doom Wad Station is another great one to check out. I also recommend Mod DB. This has Heretic, Hexen, and Strife mods, and it has a great little filtering system that allows you to filter them by popularity, ratings, and so on. Now if you want to see some of these Doom mods in action, check out Icarus Liv's channel. He has an extensive series of Doom mod videos. Now let's talk about installing and setting up Quest Z Doom. Before I go on, make sure you donate if you enjoy this port. A lot of work and time has gone into it. Now there's some installation instructions on this official website here, but all you need to do to install it is to turn on your Quest, connect it to your computer, and open up SideQuest. If you don't already have SideQuest, there's a link to a tutorial on installing it in the description below. So click the button to install the latest Quest Z Doom, then go down and click on this link, which will take you to the Quest Z Doom launcher. So install this also, and let's play some Quest Z Doom. So once installed, go into your library, unknown sources, and then click Quest Z Doom Launcher. Now let's take a look at the Quest Z Doom Launcher. Starting from the furthest left, we have our core games. These are our iWads. They contain the base game data. The rest of these other tabs act like PWADs. They're these things we can use to modify the game. So extra maps, remastered sounds, HD textures, weapon packs that enable 3D models of the weapons. And I do recommend using these if possible as the 2D sprite weapons don't work so well in VR. Now once you've downloaded them, you then select the iWAD and the modifications you want to choose and then launch the game. Now let's take a look at super sampling. One of the main things this does is reduce the amount of jagged edges and MSAA improves the image quality. So here you'll see an image of super sampling turned up to 1.6 versus 0.5. And here's an image of MSAA at four compared to one. Now coming to the right, you can view the log of all the actions you've taken within the launcher. You can see all the changes I've made to super sampling and MSAA in that log. I'll show you what Rescan does a bit later. And disclaimer, credits and Wimp out. That's pretty self-explanatory. Wimp out is if you want to quit the launcher. So let's download a core game. We'll start by downloading Free Doom. So Free Doom is a free game that works with the Doom engine. And we seem to have an error. Okay, I'm back. I worked out what the error was. My internet connection dropped out, but I'll leave that in the video just in case you experience the same thing. So I've downloaded these other mods. These are the mods recommended for your first playthrough by the official website. Now I've never played Doom in VR, so this is my first time. Let's go to hell. simply amazing uh, to be able to go into this game and play it like this as a kid I would have only dreamt of being able to do this and now it's a reality part of me just can't believe I'm inside doom right now
I can see why they chose that particular mod combination to start off with. Now there are a ton of different combinations of mods you can have on the website. They've listed some of their most favorite tried and tested combinations if you want to give those a go. Now of course Quest Z Doom doesn't contain full game wads for Doom, Hexen, Heretic. So how do you transfer these wads to Quest Z Doom? Well first you've had to run Quest Z Doom at least once and restart the headset for these folders to appear in the Quest's internal storage. So once you run Quest Z Doom you connect your headset to your computer, go into the internal storage and Quest Z Doom and then you go to the wads file. There you can put your iWads such as Doom, Doom 2, Hexen, Heretic, Strife and so on. So I'm just going to copy those over there. That's where the iWads live. Now we go back into the launcher and you'll see the iWads aren't there. I go into download core games but obviously we don't need to download them because we've copied them over. So I just select rescan and it basically refreshes and now I can see all of my iWads in that core game section. Now I will test out the iWOD for Strife and you can see it's working perfectly fine. And what about modifications? Well I have a few modifications here for Heretic that I want to transfer over to Quest Z Doom on my Quest headset. Now not all modifications work but a fair amount do and I just go into the mods folder in the Quest Z Doom folder and transfer them over and you'll see when I rescan they appear in the other files section. So I choose the Heretic iWOD, I choose Ramiro's Heresy. Now this is a pretty cool mod, you can play as a Doom guy, you can play as a Baron of Hell. So you can see my gun is very off-center to the laser sight there and it seems I just had to hold down the Oculus Quest button on the controller to recenter myself and it fixed it. So let's try another mod that I just transferred over. This has multiple .pk3 files and so I just select all of the relevant ones that are relevant to that mod and if I hit go to hell, hopefully it should run it okay. Great, looks like it's working okay. So as you recognize, this is a Quake mod. So there are potentially quite a few mods out there that could work quite well with Quest Z Doom. Part of the fun is just exploring what's out there, seeing what works and what doesn't. Some mods won't work at all and some will work but be a bit laggy like this Golden Souls 2 and that can be due to firstly the limitations of the quest and also the optimization of the game engine. And you can lower the super sampling and MSAA to try and improve performance. But this will come at the cost of visual quality. So before I start any game or mod, I make sure I deselect all and then I start fresh selecting the game and mod that I want. Now there are a ton of options. I'm just going to look at the VR options for now. So with VR options, you can adjust your height if you're feeling a bit too tall or small in the game. There are various control options such as being able to use teleport rather than smooth locomotion and adjust the snap turn angle. You can also adjust the haptics. This is the rumble you feel in the controller when you say pick up an item. You can also adjust things on your 2D sprite weapon. You can adjust the pitch and the scale, make it larger or smaller. You can also adjust the look of your 2D sprite weapon. So I prefer the crossed one which you see here or the fat look which makes it kind of 3D and you can adjust how fat the gun is on that slider. Then if we look down below you can see you can lock the frame rate if you have low performance so if you're experiencing performance issues you can try that out. You can see up here I've turned on the frame per second so I can see how many frames my game is running at. Um, you can turn on dynamic lighting, I leave that off just for performance sake. Now if you go to VR HUD, so one of the things I noticed when I first started this game is that the heads up display seemed very low and so to fix this I increased the HUD scale to 1 and then I adjusted the uh, VR HUD pitch to 0 and that seemed to fix the issue to an extent so if I get out of it you can see I just look down and I can see my heads up display. Now if I go back into options, I'll show you what happens when you play around with the pitch. So go into options, the HUD options, and then I'm going to increase pitch just to 13, not to the maximum, and then we'll get out of here. And now I look down, you see I have to look down a lot further to see the HUD, and it seems a bit too low for me anyway. And so adjusting that, will raise it or lower it depending on your preference and so I have it at zero 
um, I have the fixed pitch on and fixed roll on then you have auto map settings and it has the same scale pitch and roll settings as you see in the HUD and you can adjust that as your preference so I do hope this video has been interesting and helpful if it has do remember to like and subscribe to support the channel let me know what awesome mod combinations you find in the comment section below and I'll catch you next time <laughs>